Okay, we're broadcasting. Okay, we're good. Okay. All right, welcome to our coverage here on Mustang Beach. And we just saw Lee Wickland go through the line. Leg one of the Great Texas 300. Super hot. He and Dave look really good. Sale three two six. Sale three two six, Terry. All right, thank you for joining us, everybody. Sorry we're a little late with the broadcast. We had some technical difficulties. We just saw Lee Wickland, Max 324, go through the line. Leg one, Great Texas 300, here on Mustang Beach. I'm here with John sailing? Williams. I'm here with John Williams on the beach. What's up, J-Dub? Hey, Jeremy, what a day. I mean, the breeze has just been beautiful. Just like we were anticipating, there was a little bit of backing to it, plenty of velocity all the way to the next checkpoint. And with that nice deep spinnaker run, we knew that the NACRA 20 could do its thing, and Lee definitely did it. Ian put the kite back up. Beautiful. All right, we're going to get this boat coming to the finish line, then I've got somebody I want to talk to here. He's wet. He's tired. Oh, man. But Mexico today has triumphed. Team Mexican. <laughs> All right. We're getting some technical difficulties worked out here. John Tomko, Ian Billings of Two Wire Sailing now coming down to the line. Driving really deep. Didn't nearly come through with the kind of style that my friend Lee Wickland did. Hey, why don't you turn around there, George? You better over there? All right, let's walk over here, gentlemen. All right, we've got a live interview with the winners of leg one here, Great Texas 300. Come on over here. Right, I want you right here, Lee. One on each side of you, yeah. Oh, one on each side of me. Let me go in the middle. There we go. What's up, man? How are you? Lee Wicklin, how does that feel to win that leg? Awesome, dude. Awesome. It was a freaking epic ride all day. David, uh, he went for a good ride around the around the spin pole once. Oh. To, and he still couldn't manage to turn the camera on, but it was it was awesome, you know. Whipped him like a cheap racehorse all day, man, and, and he's the reason we got here when we did. Davis right on, man. How does that feel to you uh, winning that, the leg of that race there, the uh, leg one? awesome fucking cool shit man what were the conditions like out there yeah it's really nice actually it went too windy not too many waves but every once in a while we get a some decent ones uh tomco we're duking it out with him and then he went he just kept going out so we were going to do what he was doing since he was you know he's always top dog and uh, so we stayed with him, but we got to a point to where we were going into the teens, and I just I wasn't comfortable with it. I saw the the, the wind diagram this morning, and I knew out here we had a triangle that we were going to get into. In the horizon here, I've got a blue kite and I've got a white kite. I believe our white kite is Yo Baby. Tough to say on the blue kites. We got a lot of blue kites in the race this year. As we all know, blue is fast. The argument that I always had with my skipper, Robbie Daniel, about whether or not blue or red was fast. <laughs> That's right. Time has proven blue is fast. All right, well, as soon as we get the uh, sails down on Team 2 Wire, they'll come over and talk to us. All right, so we're out here on Mustang Beach. We're pretty remote here, so we've had a little feed issue this uh, this finished leg here. 
Um, we've got it going live right now, so hopefully it's coming through. We will have some video when we uh, when we get home tonight. We'll edit some video and post it for you. So, but I think the feed is good now. Thank you very much for watching, and again, thank you very much, Surf City Catamarans, for helping us out with transportation. We couldn't do it without help from sponsors. All right. And again, thank you for watching. Our feed keeps dropping out, so we apologize for that. We'll keep posting it up as we can. Um, the, the couple of spots that we got intermittent signals from the fleet were showing that they were making a good 18 to 20 miles per hour over ground. And with such a perfect downwind wind direction, it really has made for a, a nice spin reach all day today. But deep enough that I think that there were times at the NACRA 20, the, uh, the deeper kite and the, the teardrop mass of the NACRA 20, I think, worked in its favor. Got two or three boats on the horizon here. White kite, pink kite, blue kite. Currently, you see, you can just make out Yo Baby on the horizon. They're on a on a port spin run here. Taking nice little bites down into the beach when they can. It's a pretty small finish line that that Billy Rich now has set for the fleet here. Obviously we don't need a giant finish line when there's only seven boats in the fleet, but by the same token, uh, it's also kind of hitting a penny in a barrel. So Shannon Galway and, and John Outwood are looking pretty good on that port spin reach right now. Cooking right along. And in case you're just joining us, we had Lee Wickland coming through the finish line first and John Tomko in second place. Lee came in nice and hot with a classic war -O into the sand finish. Uh, we will bring you that video we did get the video, it just wasn't broadcasting live at the time we found. But we do have video of that finish for you, it was pretty exciting. He came in with quite a bit of speed, uh, actually nailed a set of cat tracks on his way up the sand. And, uh, and of course, uh, David's dad, Jose, did a great job of yanking the boat around into the breeze, hanging on to that spin bridle, because the boat sure wanted to go over when they, uh, when they hit the sand. Absolutely. So we have conditions out of the southwest right now, blowing mid-teens, small surf, and uh, just epic sailing conditions for the Great Texas 300. Yeah, I'd say mid-teens, pretty steady, and then we've got some gusts that are, that are a good bit more than that. Yep. Yeah, there's a gust right there in the upper teens that just rolled through. So yeah, definitely perfect sailing conditions. Yeah, I can feel it in my hair. It's palpable. <laughs> Thank you for joining our live feed here from Mustang Beach, Texas. We're on a remote. We'll see this right white now. kite jive over to port here in a minute. I'm not going to be able to make that angle all the way to the beach. Shannon's definitely got it going on. He's uh, just moving. I know it's really hard to see from this. Uh, from this distance, but just watch as, as these guys approach. There's a tremendous amount of spray 
coming off of these boats. They're, just the amount of energy that's being transferred from the rig into the platform is really spectacular. And no, nothing shows that better than the white water that you're going to see just cascading off the hulls. That seems essentially disappear for seconds at a time in white water. It's really cool to watch. It's really cool to watch. Of course, they're pretty far off still. What do you think? They're about maybe one mile off, half a mile. A mile and a half, I'd say. Yeah. That's probably about right. I think your uh, your call. Oh, there goes Shannon for a jibe, it looks like. Looks like he's jibing over to starboard. Yep, he is jibed now. That looks like a pretty good line to get him in here. So Shannon and Jonathan are, are looking good for a, a nice nice spin run right in here. In case you're just joining us, thank you very much. And I'd like to shout out Surf City Catamarans for Surf City. donating. <laughs> Surf City, here we come. For donating to our transportation fund, thank you very much. Take sponsors to get this kind of thing going. We're live here on Mustang Beach in Texas. On a remote stretch of Texas sand spit here on the Gulf Coast. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty amazing. You'll drive for, I don't know, two or three miles and there's nothing. And then, bloop, there's a house. <laughs> it's amazing to see this much beachfront property completely unimproved. What's more amazing is that we can actually live feed from here, which has been a difficult scenario, but I think we have it dialed in now. Yeah, you know, and just looking out across the Gulf now, it just it's just nice and filled all the way as far as I can see. Good white caps rolling in. Just really nice sailing conditions. These guys must have had a nice ride today. This is one of the things that really recommends the Great Texas. I know some of you that might be listening or watching have done some of the East Coast races like the uh, the World 1000 or the Tybee 500. And one of the things that really recommends the Great Texas is the consistent wind angle. You're able to really kind of count on spin reaching. Occasionally we'll get a couple legs where the wind will go around on the nose or it lightens up. But this is the prevailing wind direction. This is the prevailing velocity for this time deep. He's got to come up quite a bit now. He's going to have to drop that. Well, I think we're going to be looking at the blue kite next, George. First to the beach, Lee Wickland, David Serdas of Team Chums. Making it in just over six hours. Is that the monkey? <laughs> in second place, right behind him, not too far, just a few minutes, John Tomko and Ian Billings of Two Wire Sailing. And in third place, Shannon Galway, Jonathan Atwood, of Team Yo Baby. Now coming to the beach and also having a tough time. I think once those dagger boards come up, the boat really wants to crab. Uh, so you wind up sliding so much further downwind than you really intended. Steve seems to be handling it okay right now. He's got a nice wave in behind him. This will be Steve Pichet and Juke Ball of Team Monkey Business. Steve, of course, is the, uh, the man who's really kept this race alive. And he's turning up now. He's let the kite go. Plenty of pressure to get him right through the line. Another nice Warrell finish there. Get that ground crew on that spin pole quick. He's still driving. He's still driving. He's still moving. He's sailing up the beach. He made it up past the cars. There was nobody there to catch his bow. All right, then we got Team Quicksilver. Mike Berline, 
Philippe Bettler. Clearly driving it really, really deep. They wrapped up that kite. It's it's come back undone now. And looks like they're going to go ahead and take it down. A little wing-on-wing -wing action. Don't see that a lot in the catamaran world. <laughs> nice jib reach down through the line. Looks like he's taking it nice and easy. Spin that sucker up. And they're done. Rudder's up. All right. Very nice, John Williams. Thank you for joining us. I apologize for our feed dropping out. Hey, look what we got. You go. Hey, boys. That was sweet. <laughs> that was ever a ride. All right, let me get right in between you so we can hear you. Right over here to the sun. He's a tough director, but I love working with him. Well, guys. We kind of knew that you were going to have pressure all the way here. Is that, or we suspected that? Is that what happened? We, uh, I mean, it, it honked most of the day, but just in the last, what, hour? I mean, it really turned on quick. Yeah. And I'd have to say, we did the pressuring for a while on these two guys until about 10 miles out when they jived and we hung it. So it was good. When you jived and hung it? When they jived and we just kept going straight and decided to hang it later on. Oh, I see. So you were getting a little separation, look for some leverage. And it paid out. Well done. Nice job. So, uh, so what do you think of the new boat? It's awesome. It's unbelievable. <laughs> and and from up front, it feels different. It feels a lot different. It's a lot more responsive, and definitely weight sensitive. But man, it's great. It's so easy to pressure through this uh, Gulf chop. So. Hey, how about that? You guys were working on each other there. What was going on? Good job, right. Mike. You got Welcome back. Offshore, right? and it was, we've been in this since when you guys jived is when it started for us. Wow. Oh, that's why you... I don't know, 30 minutes later, I guess. Yeah, that made so you said they minutes. continued on to get a little bit of leverage on you. Yep. Then, jived about 30 minutes later and leveraged out just from they, the corner. And then they killed us. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're not dead. We were, like, we were like, okay, well, your baby's gone. They're like, they're way too high. They were higher than us. And then they got for a win. And hey, good job, guys. <laughs> well, really awesome to watch the, the duel there at the end. You guys uh, kind of dicing it out. Steve? Steve is right over there. He'll be putting his stuff away. He almost sailed through the parking lot. Oh. So he had a difficult time getting the boat under control there. And fortunately, fortunately, Andrew was there. So we. Uh, <laughs> Well, fortunately, Andrew was right by the grill. Andrew Tadden's here. He's making his dinner tonight. Andrew was right by the grill. He's a big guy, so he could grab the bow and stop the boat. <laughs> I, thought, I thought he scattered like... <laughs> Pigeons with an oncoming truck. Excellent visual. Did you guys have any trouble finding the checkpoint? I mean, could you see it? Oh, we had... Exactly, yeah. <laughs> we followed the pink one. No. Follow the pink kite. How does that feel? You got the yellow jersey, right? People are going to pedal for the yellow jersey. You're really visible. Was that intentional? Absolutely. My wife loves it. <laughs> she said all you need to say right there. <laughs> well, guys, really nice job. I mean, just six and a half hours. Nice run to Mustang. Really well done. We had a little trouble getting off the beach. We uh, are uh, uh, crossbar came loose and we didn't have any rudders and then the uh, uh, boom block uh, we used a new uh, uh, tie to the boom and that that gave uh, so we lost quite a bit of uh, ground but then we're happy we came back on those guys yeah we saw you this morning with the launch and we thought maybe there was a problem getting the rudder locked down or something you definitely didn't have sails trimmed at that critical time when you were in the wash yeah. So everybody else kind of got through the surf before you, but it really wasn't that bad once you got moving. Yeah, yeah, but the crossbar got just get up, got off the, the arm, the rudder arm. So we're like, ooh. So I was looking backward and then hoping, praying for not big waves coming at a, at us, and then we got lucky. That was good. Yeah. Well, luck counts the same. Always. Well done, guys. Good job. Thanks, John. Glad you made it safe. We'll talk more in a bit, Jeremy. John Williams, how are you? That was pretty cool. That was very cool. These guys were in nice tight one. and dicing it the whole time. Absolutely. They had uh, one little split there. 
uh, maybe they said about 45 minutes ago, where yep. they uh, where Team Quicksilver jived in to get into the beach, and Yo Baby extended on out. Uh, and you heard Philippe. He thought at that point Yo Baby was out of the game. He thought they had him at that point. But in actuality, they were looking for a little bit of leverage. I'll bet that was Jonathan's call, if I had to guess. Uh huh. And a uh, little bit of leverage. They said they jived about a half hour later. And when they came back together, they had the cross. Nice. So It's really great to get these guys fresh off the water like that. They're all energized. and Yeah, and it is. Now let's it, say so. hello to Beverly. Come on, Bev. Come stand right here. Bev Simmons. Hey. Bev is, uh, is doing us the very big favor. We don't have Sarah Leonard this year. So we've got Bev going and fetching sailors for us because who could say no? Really. Who could say no? <laughs> Thank you very much for watching our feed. We've got a solid feed now. We didn't have a solid feed a few minutes ago, so thank you very much. We did get some video of Lee Wickland finishing, which we'll post tonight, and uh, we'll let you have it. Hey, thanks, Bev. We appreciate having you here. <laughs> right on. So let's talk about the rest of the fleet, Dub. Who do we have out there on the water still? Uh, well, let's see. Of course, Kihara. Kihara we is did out get there. a uh, a report early on that they had a capsize. I'm hearing people saying we got a boat. All right, I think we have another boat. Look to the right of those two marks off there, Dub. Okay. Blue kite. That could be Kihara. We got a report uh, from Steve Cooley. Steve Cooley called in and let the race committee know that Kiara had capsized and that they took uh, about 30 minutes to get righted. Right. So it may, uh, we may have a couple of particularly tired sailors. So far everybody we've seen has been exhilarated. Yes, totally. Tough look for them, of course, uh, having the cracked hull in their primary boat, getting a second secondary boat, the Tiger, and of course Ingrid Backer from the Netherlands uh, having a, a bit of bad luck. Hopefully and we're also for looking for Team Sailboat Shop. That's right, exactly. Mike and Chris are still out there. Okay, copy that. So. We'll, we'll keep our Come eye out. Come on in the sun, boys. Let's talk about your day. Because not everybody has as good a day as you. Some people that are watching were at work. <laughs> Some people that are watching don't have jobs. And you're combining the two. <laughs> Here you are. You're in your office. Everybody's looking to you for support. Way to go to wire sailing. How was that for a ride? Oh, it was really, really relaxing. It was couldn't have been any easier, really. Just really deep downwind, and I don't think it ever blew more than 15, 16, so it was just an easy, easy day. The, the only issue was the weeds were thicker than I've seen them on this leg ever, so probably had to clear 40 or 50 times. 40 or 50 times you had to go clear boards? Uh, not myself. I stayed on the wire the whole day and just took the helm. And John went and down and did it. So, yeah. Wow! I'm going to sail for you. That's awesome. Well, I don't disagree, but <laughs> that's usually not the way it works out. So a lot of weeds. A lot of weeds, yeah. It would slow us down. Once we couldn't, we'd get knocked down to like 15 and a half knots, and that's as fast as we could go. We, could, we knew. We... We had to do terminal it. velocity yeah. because of the turbulence. As soon as you took it off, you could back up to 18 knots pretty easily, and sometimes more than that. So it got to a point where you just had to kind of go with it for a little while, even though it felt bad because I'd go down there, and as soon as I pick it up, I'd, I'd look, and they were already fouled again. So a little tricky with that, but uh, that was interesting. The, the NACRA 20 did it sailed really well today. It was good conditions for them, really deep downwind. Yeah, a little bit deeper. Yeah, and, and reaching a uh, little different sails for him. The boat seemed like it was going pretty well. Yeah, he was smiling pretty big when he hit the sand. So systems are all working out well. Any issues? No issues. No, everything's working out well. Yeah, uh, we're very happy. So I don't know what the time was. Was it four hours, uh, six hours? Just over, just over six hours. Yeah, that's a very good run for, for uh, 100 miles. So you can tell how easy it is, you know. The boats just kept going. We were talking about that. These guys, they look, they're live, okay? So we're not kidding. You really, six hours and you're in the sand. And this is the prevailing wind direction. This is the type of pressure that you can expect 
So all you Tybee guys, all you Warhol guys, come on back. Give it another try. I guarantee you won't be sorry. Well, two-wire sailing, nice job today, really good. Probably got Lee uncorrected, oh, I, would, yeah. I would say. Yeah. <laughs> but he feels pretty good oh, getting to the dirt first. Yeah. Good to see that he's been wanting that for a long time, and I think that's the first time he's got to the beach first on any leg. So that's pretty good. It's pretty cool. Awesome. Well, thanks, guys. Thanks very much. Thank Welcome you. back. Glad you're safe. Thanks. We'll talk to you guys again soon. Okay. So we got two boats left out today. We're looking for a team sailboat shop, and we're looking for the other Yo Baby boat which will be the, uh, the Yo Baby Tiger with Team Kihara. Jerry, I'm going to step away for a minute to see if I can catch some, some of what's going on over here with the race community. I'll be right back. Love it. Thanks, John Williams. Very nice commentary. Very nice interview. John Williams, of course, Catabran Sailor from Long Beach, California, all the way out here in Texas. We're broadcasting live from Mustang Beach in Texas on the Gulf Coast. Thank you for joining us. And again, thank you, Surf City Catamarans, for the sponsorship for getting us out here. And we have on the horizon there, we believe, is Team Kaihara, Ingrid Backer from the Netherlands driving. And Aaron McCulley crewing aboard that boat. Still not in the sights. We don't see Team Sailboat Shop. So we're looking for them. Also, we're looking for Steve Cooley, who was on the jet ski today. We'll try to get some live video from him. He had a GoPro helmet cam on and hopefully got some good footage from the water. It's blowing in the mid to high teens. Small surf. Perfect sailing conditions. Water's warm. And on the horizon we have Team Kaihara. The way that Steve Pache has put together the Great Texas 300 is pretty incredible. If you wanted to do this race, you could get away with it for pretty, pretty inexpensive, really, for a distance beach cast, cat race. The sailing is awesome. You could do it on a budget. And if you're remotely interested in, in distance beach cat racing, this is pretty much the ideal. Yeah, and if you, uh, I encourage you to come out here and do this race. It's pretty awesome. Ingrid Backer and Aaron McCulley on a Tiger. About a mile offshore. Getting ready to jibe here to the finish line. Leg one of the Great Texas 300. And they just threw a jibe. And they're on their way to the beach. Thank you very much for joining us here. Our 4G is very, very minimal. So unfortunately, the beginning of our broadcast dropped out a little bit. Hopefully, it's more solid now.
So that is Team Sailboat Shop. All right, so. So that is not Ingrid Backer that's coming into the beach there. That is actually Team Sailboat Shop getting ready to come into the beach. And of course, we heard reports earlier from Team Kaihara. That's Ingrid and Aaron McCulley. Ingrid Backer and Aaron McCulley. Uh, they flipped and spent some time upside down out there. So we're still looking for them. And in your view here is Team Sailboat Shop. Mike Rohr and Chris Holt. As you saw there, they just took their kite down. They couldn't quite carry it all the way into the beach. Too hot of angle. Doing a little two sail reaching on in here to the beach. So that is not Team Kaihara. Again, that's Team Sailboat Shop. Mike Rohr and Chris Holt. And we're still looking on the horizon to see if we can see Team Kaihara. The team comprised of Ingrid Backer from the Netherlands and Aaron McCulley, a seasoned veteran of the Great Texas 300. Thank you very much for joining us here. We're live on the beach, Great Texas 300. We've got a couple of special guests coming up here. What's up guys? Hey. Who do we have here? Oh. We've got Juki Ball and we've got Steve Pache, the founder and promoter of the Great Texas 300. How was it out there guys? One, one word. The monkey got the frog. The monkey got the frog today. <laughs> today, today was the... 100 miles of fighting it out with those guys and we got them. <laughs> today was the whole reason that you sail was all day today. It just, we got out there and it was just beautiful the whole time. It was, uh, you, you're pushing it, you're pushing your body, you're pushing the boat, but you're smiling the whole time. It was beautiful. Very cool. What were the conditions like out there? Uh, it was low, low waves, uh, heavy winds, and just where you could, I mean, we're going over 20, 20 plus. It was just knots, knots 20 knots plus. And, you know, I... Uh, you kept thinking, surely we can't push it any harder, and you and Steve on the on the helm was just just nailing it over and over. It was just a we're in harmony. I've never gone that many hours uh, without without realizing what distance I've gone. The the day just went by in a freaking snap. Awesome. Yeah, it was. Sounds like you guys have your teamwork really dialed in. Yeah, we we were. I was ready to go another 20 miles. I mean. <laughs> I mean, that's that's probably the most fun day run I've ever had. I mean, oh, my God. For the last two hours, the wind was just perfect. I don't know. The seas went to almost zero. There was some weed, and that's why Shannon got us, is that we got stuck in a weed patch when he didn't. But well, the, he did a good job sailing because of the weed, right? Well, he, we were about a mile ahead. We were fighting it out with them all day. Yeah. It was me, Burline, and Shannon all within real close distance of each other all day. And uh, we dived in a little early, it got caught, and, and Burline followed us, and we just covered him, and we got caught in weeds. Both of us got caught in weeds, and they, he, he got some good stuff. So good for him. I mean, he, he caught up and got us in the end. But, oh, what a... Sounds like a pretty competitive fleet out there, huh? Uh, the beef leaders, yeah. Tom goes out on his own zone there. <laughs> he was, uh, oh my God, I don't know. You know, he. Uh, we could see him the whole way. So, the fact that you can see the guy in front and come close to seeing the guy behind, yeah, it was pretty tight. There was also a, a strategic thing. I always try and get do something a little different from John on this one. Oh, here they come. 
Here we got some action behind us. Thank you, guys. Sailboat shop hitting the beach. Very nice, very nice. How'd you like our entry? It was really nice. <laughs> we came in lit up. We were going to beat them to the, to the line. That was awesome. We could see these guys most of the day, but then they kind of faded out in the end. I don't, I don't know what happened. So that's my Mike Rohr, Chris Holt. Hitting the beach on Team Tailboat Shop, sail number two, Great Texas 300. We have one more boat to hit the beach, Team Kaihara. We're looking for them on the horizon. We heard they had a little issue out there. Uh, they spent a little time upside down, and they it took them about a half hour to write, and so we're looking for them on the horizon. Team Kaihara. Aaron McCulley crewing for Ingrid Backer from the Netherlands. And... Uh, so they'll, they'll be the last team here. Leg one on Mustang Beach. We're live. So they got, um, you heard that they flipped over or something? Or? Yeah, we heard that they flipped over out there somewhere, but they, they spent some time upside down and they rided. We got that report from Steve, uh, Jet Ski Steve. So yeah. um, he's putting the jet ski on, on the trailer right now. So we'll bring you more when we hear it. And of course, that other voice there in the microphone, Steve Pache founder and promoter of the Great Texas 300. How are you, uh, how do you, how do you like the event? How, how what's your, uh, give me a prospectus of, of your fine event here. Well, I, this is our 11th year and uh, we've got a super organization and uh, boy, you just don't get wind better than this. I mean, well, I don't know. What did we do? Uh, six and a half hours, a uh, hundred miles. Just doesn't get better than that. Yeah. Wish we had more boats here, to be honest. That's yeah. the disappointment this year, but uh, we're hoping everybody will be back next year. Um, we, we keep on getting the sponsorship and the money yeah. to bring in people like you, and we really appreciate you and John and other people coming in here. And we're kind of the last, we're the last of the big uh, distance races, but yeah. this is fun. If yeah. you're watching, try and get out here next year. Yeah. Come on over here, say that again. Let's get in front of the camera. Steve Pache again, talking here. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, if, if you can make it out here next year, we really want to want to get a crowd. I, I mean, the sailing today was utterly fantastic. I, I, you just can't get much better than a 20-knot breeze. And, you know, I just sat, I had a speed puck on there, and I just looked at it all day going 17, 18, 19, uh, 20 knots. I mean, that's we we're hitting 20 knots on wave faces regularly, running 18 knots. I don't know what is that in, in miles per hour, like 20, 23, yeah, 24 23, miles yeah. an hour. Mm -hmm. I mean, <laughs> how how much more fun can you get than that? Yeah. So warm water, everything, you know. It's it, uh, yeah, it was fantastic run today. I looked at the forecast this morning and just went. Uh, if if you ask me to draw up a a perfect uh, forecast that was it yeah so Very cool. and, and again just really appreciate you coming out here and I uh, hope team Piera gets in here we brought Ingrid all the way from uh, the Netherlands and then her boat broke they've had a bit of a tough time but uh, they'll make it they'll make it I'm yeah. sure sure they'll make it at in so, here so tell us Ingrid backer from the Netherlands uh, you, the great Texas fleet sponsored to get her over here. Tell us about how that worked out. Well, I, I, I went and talked to a bunch of people at Worlds, and we we really wanted to get a woman skipper out here to this race. And uh, and I kept on saying that to a lot of the women skippers that were at Worlds in L.A., which you were at, too. And uh, she said that uh, she was game to do it. And uh, what we did was we put a fund together, and we said, you know, any any woman skipper that shows up will get a portion of this fund, and and we got one one person to show up, and we raised uh, twenty two hundred dollars. So that's that's how we got her here, and she was brave enough to come here and do it. Um, unfortunately, the boat that we got together for her kind of broke. We don't feel very good about that, but we got another one for yeah. her, and uh, I'm sure. They had a very long night last night, yeah. and the fact that if they just make it here today, that will be 
just a triumph. Totally. And uh, then they can get some sleep. I know Aaron, I was working on Aaron's boat, Aaron and Ingrid's boat, until two minutes to the start. I mean, we were hooking things up. So uh, they really pushed it. Aaron hadn't even eaten. I know he, he, he once he got out there, he would have had to have been on the wire in the entire time. Yeah. So he didn't get to eat today. Yeah. So, you know, it's it's not – they didn't have the most fun, but they'll have fun tomorrow. Yeah, totally. So They get all the bugs worked out today and, and hit the water tomorrow and give you guys a run for your money. Yeah. <laughs> right on. Hey, thanks, Steve Pache. Yeah. You, you guys do a great job here. Thanks Thank again. You. Yeah, see you Thank soon. You, Jeremy. All right. Well, I think what we'll do – let me consult with John Williams here. Enjoy the waves there and the great Texas finish line. John Williams. Awesome interview. That was uh, that was really good. It's good to get uh, that kind of perspective as soon as they get off the water. Yep. Talking to them about what, what their day was like. That was really good. I while you were talking to Steve there, I was talking to Juke about you know how it was uh, one of those days where there's only a couple of miles of jibes. You know, most of the day, 85, 90 percent of the day, they were pointed at the at the mark. So yeah. it was. Uh, you know, it was kind of a, and that's what we were talking about. He's got one of the older Aquata harnesses. He said you really had to settle in today and get comfortable because once you were out and had a foot in the strap and hooked up the chicken line, you just didn't move much. Yeah. He's like, it was, you know, a little bit of trimming, and that was it. And nice. It was uh, hang on and go. And, you know, it it, uh, it can tend. It feels like your, your quad can atrophy. Yeah, over time, <laughs> totally. Like Start losing that. losing blood in certain areas. Yeah, but what was interesting, Duke said that he didn't even really need the chicken line. Of course, he's hooked up, you, because the second that you're not, you do need it. But he said it was nice, a nice flat ride for them today. Nice. It sounded like it was just really a sweet downwind run, like that's, John Tomko was saying, a little bit deep, and uh, and just. Yeah, that's what Steve Pache was saying. He, he said he just kept watching his, uh, you know, the speed puck just read 17 18 knots the whole day <laughs> so so i think Send what we'll it. do dub is of course that's john williams my name is jeremy leonard from sail revolution and i think what we'll do dub is i don't see that boat on the horizon anywhere and the well, sailors we'll are pretty do tired then is, is we'll give some notice on the facebook page okay and uh let people know if we're going to come back live yeah that sounds good. status updates as uh as the afternoon continues. Absolutely. And That's we'll, good. Do you want to shut this down now? Yeah, we'll shut this down now. Thank you very much for watching. The only team we haven't talked to is uh, Sailboat Shop. Did you want to talk to Mike? Are they game to talk? Stand by for a second. Bev, do you think uh, Mike and Chris would want to talk to us? No, that's uh, that's Pache. See if you can find uh, Team Sailboat Shop. We're going to try and get Team Sailboat Shop here. And they're the only team that we have not talked to. Is that the boat that just finished? So stand by. Okay, then that's them. It's uh, Mike and Chris. Mike is the skipper. Let's see if we can get them here rather quickly. And again, we're waiting for one more boat, and that's Ingrid Backer. No, haven't and seen Aaron them McCulley. You, you heard about their capsize. They had a... in once but I like it seemed a little too early to jive in so I thought maybe they might have had some problems well the the report that we got from monkey business as they sailed by them was that they were very focused on what they were doing on the tram and it looked like there were some sail issues going on some rigging issues going on so as quickly as they had to rig that boat at two o'clock in the morning it's entirely possible that you know one spinnaker halyard retrieval line went over something instead of under something it does. <laughs> Don't ask him how he knows. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. So maybe they maybe they did have a rigging problem and had to flip it for that reason because it seems like a half hour in this breeze to be over is a little excessive unless they were doing some rigging. I have had to swim that halyard, you know, out to the turning block to fix it. <laughs> I've had to swim up there and unhook a main one time. On the water? On the water. One, uh, one year, it was we got hit with a squall. It was blowing like 50 to 60, and so we just held the thing down and uh, decided that we we're going to try to s keep sailing under jib alone. So swam out to the tip, and because you can't get that thing done hook, you know, you just you can't get it. You got to, yeah. So pop.
dropped it off, and that was the year I did it with Carl Tazier from San Diego. We rolled it up, lashed it to the trampoline, righted it. The, the jib took down. off. The whole boat tried to take off without us <laughs> going down. <laughs> you know, I've heard stories about people either wading out a storm or, or sailing through a squall, jib only. How does the boat handle in that? A little different. It is a lot different. Uh, definitely, uh, the, definitely, you see how the mainsail balances the whole rig out. But um, it, it worked. We were clipping along like 16 knots. Probably could have done that with just a bare stick, though. We could have. <laughs> but You just didn't know how to get the jib down. Too. And, well, then... Uh, then we did that for a couple of miles, and then the squall passed. And of course, on the backside of the squall around here, it's freaking no wind. So we had to sail into the beach, put the main back up, and I think we got in here about 10:30 at night that year. But it was not this year, baby. Well, First in the year. dirt. First in the dirt. Lee Wicklin and David Serdas of Team Chums really making that Nacker 20 work today. No, no, we're going to try to do the same thing we did today that we did. To... Boat feels good, no change. Boat feels good. Um, I think we're going to give everything a good look over. We heard a couple of pops. I think it was just, my, you know, I got some my outer spin blocks of those metal ones, so they grip really good, and I think it was just the waves. But still, when you hear a good pop, it's not a good thing to hear when you're out on the rum line. So we're going to give everything a good look over, make sure we don't have anything busted. And, or... All right. One year in the Tybee, we had a broken chain plate we didn't know about. But then afterwards, we remembered hearing the pop uh, two days later. So. There's the voice of experience again, somebody who's seen a lot of what can happen. Don't, I mean, you get to the beach, you want to drink a beer, you want to relax, but don't forget those things that happen during the day because it could prove to be a serious issue. Pre preparation, preparation is a big part of this race. You know, you... You don't you don't prep everything and you're you're gonna pay for it on the water. You know, it's gonna make you work harder, possibly not even get you to the finish line. But the worst thing is it makes you work harder because you gotta mess with something that you should have been taken care of on land and done right. All right, we got a uh, we got a report from our safety officer Trey Garrison sitting atop of Texas style Cadillac. And he says they can see a boat. All right, the oil platform, yeah. Okay, let's take a look. We might have uh, Kihara in sight. Give me just a second, Jerry. I'll see if I can confirm that. Okay, cool. All right, thank you very much for joining us today. Um, we were going to shut down the feed, but now we have a report of a boat on the horizon, and we are going to try and see who that is. We have George on the camera today. I'll take over for him because he's it's kind of taxing looking through the camera. And we can't see them quite yet, but we'll look. We've got a report of Team Kaihara, Ingrid Backer, and Aaron McCulley on the horizon. And we've got Team Sailboat Shop on their way over for an interview here. Mike Rohr and Chris Holt. It's blowing in the solid teens, the upper teens right now. Waves are quite calm. All right, so we do have a positive confirmation of Team Kaihara on the horizon, maybe about three miles off or so, plus or minus. When we can get them on camera, we certainly will. So that will be the entire Great Texas fleet on the beach. They should be here in 
10, yeah, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, something like that. And we have one interview coming up here. Mike Holt and Chris... <laughs> <laughs> Mike Rohr and Chris Holt Team Sailboat Shop They're taking their sails down They'll be here shortly And once we get the interview With those guys with Team Sailboat Shop We're going to shut down our feed for a little bit Save some resources And our friend George on the camera trying to scan the horizon, trying to get Team Kaihara. So it probably just looks like a black dot on the horizon. Great Texas 300 broadcasting live from Mustang Beach on the Gulf Coast of Texas. Thank you very much for joining us. We're waiting for one more crew. They're about three or four miles off the beach. And we're waiting for Mike Holt, or uh, Mike Rohr and Chris Holt. Thank you very much to our sponsors. For a full list of sponsors, you can go to Great Texas, the GT300.com website, the Great Texas website. And I'd especially like to thank Surf City Catamarans for the donation for John Williams and I to have transportation. Thank you very much. All right, so making their way to the beach, Aaron McCulley and Ingrid Backer on a Hobie Tiger, and of course they've had a challenge getting on the water. Their original boat, an infusion, had a had damage, had a split seam, filled up with water and they determined that they could not repair it for the race. So the Great Texas 300 fleet got together and they found her a Hobie Tiger to sail. So an older boat, an older F-18, but it definitely, uh, definitely works. And Ingrid, of course, is a very good sailor. Unfortunately, they flipped out there. We got a report of them flipping and they spent some time upside down. And hopefully they're on their way to the beach. You can see the conditions here. It's blowing in the high teens. Very warm. Not too warm though. It's nice. Water's perfect. So perfect. And we are live here on the on the beach on Mustang Beach on the Gulf Coast of Texas. All right, so what we'll do, I was going to try and get Mike Holt, I mean, uh, Mike Rohr and Chris Holt, I keep saying that, but it looks like they are busy doing some things. So we'll try to get them. An absolutely gorgeous day here on the Gulf Coast in Texas. And if you have any aspirations of ever racing a catamaran distance race, you should get out here and do this regatta. 
It's absolutely incredible. <laughs> so the boat, the boat is right behind the mast there. Can't quite get them. You can see, let me see if I can pan over here. You can see Trey Garrison there using a mi mirror to signal, signal where the finish line is. And there's a kite flying overhead with CDs strapped to it that make it, make it flash so the boats can see the finish line. All right, we've got a little interview here. Go ahead, Jerry, you got him? All right, cool. What's up, guys? That way, that way we all stay kind of close. How's it going? Good. Good to see you, man. Glad to be here. Team Sailboat Shop, coming in hot on the beach there. How was it out there? Um, it, it was rougher than I thought it was going to be. Uh, there, were, there were times when it was a really nice sail, um, and then there were times where it just got really, really rocky, and, uh, you know, the boat was jumping around a lot. Our biggest issue was that uh, even before we were maybe about a third of the way, the, uh, the pigtail at the top of the mast that holds the spinnaker bale up broke, and so when that... that um, the bale was the only thing holding the spinnaker up, and so the spinnaker was about four inches, four or five inches short, maybe six inches short, and uh, was really hard to control the boat with the spinnaker bagged out like that. And that was one of the main issues that we had, besides the fact that we ran over miles of weed in, at one point. That that really miles. was tough. How how the boat run out there? I was okay. It was uh, except for the weed and uh, breaking the spinnaker pigtail. It was it was really a pretty nice day sail. We didn't get rained on. Um, wind was decent all day. We we got here in good time. So yeah, we just liked it would have been a little uh, higher up in the order. Well, there's always tomorrow, boys. <laughs> Mike Rohr, Chris Holt. Thank you very much, guys. Team Sailboat Shop. Right on. Awesome. Thanks for uh, being on camera. All right, so what we're going to do, we're going to close down the feed, and uh, we'll fire it back up when Ingrid gets a little closer. Thank you very much for joining us live from South Padre Island. We're not in South Padre anymore. We're at Mustang Beach, live on the beach. And uh, join us in a little bit. All right, welcome back to our live feed. We've got Team Kaihara coming on into the beach here. This is the finish of leg one. We're broadcasting live here on Mustang Beach. Of course, Team Kaihara is Ingrid Backer on the helm from the Netherlands and Aaron McCulley local. My name is Jeremy from Sail Revolution and I've got my cohort John Williams right here Hi, on Jeremy. my right hand side. Or something. I'm uh, worried about these guys. They they dropped their kite about 15 minutes ago and uh, they've been under jib and main for a while sailing very deep but with sails in tight uh, which is generally something you're trying to do just to keep the boat under control. wonder if they've lost some kind of steerage or anything. And here they come for a finish. Nice stately pace. And they're through the line. And turning downwind. There they go. Now they got it. 
Tough day. Tough Indeed. day for them on the water. Uh, we've heard some speculation. We'll find out when we start talking to the sailors. We've heard some speculation about maybe they had flipped the boat on purpose to fix a rigging issue. Um, certainly when, uh, when monkey business passed them earlier today, they sailed in close and asked if they were all right. Uh, Steve and Juke both said they made eye contact, but it was obvious that the sailors were very engaged in, in working on the deck. So I'm interested to see what, uh, what issues they might have had. They were working on that boat until very late last evening. We got reports that they were up until 2, 3 o'clock. Well, the boat didn't arrive until 2. Copy that. <laughs> so they That were was on the trailer, what, so yeah. it was lots of rigging to be done. So we've got two tired sailors on board that sucker. And both mics over to them, so 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 it's in stereo. Thank you very much for joining us. Our uh, live coverage here from Mustang Beach, leg one of the Great Texas 300. John Williams, my cohort, and myself, Jeremy Leonard, from Sail Revolution, broadcasting live from the Gulf Coast of Texas. And I've got Aaron McCulley and Ingrid Backer coming on over for an interview. And look at that team. Can you get that team of, of guys putting their boat away? They must love that. <laughs> I think they'd much rather talk than, than uh, put a boat away. Hey, guys. Hey. All right. One on each side of me. <laughs> All right. Let's go a little closer so our mic cords reach. Aaron McCulley, how are you, man? Doing great. Good. Yeah. <laughs> Tell us what happened out there. Uh, we went sailing. <laughs> nice and they're still smiling so we've got some some cold beverages i hope there's some rum in there for you guys you take take a drink ingrid I'll, I'll make some small talk of course they've had a very long day they were up until who knows what time what time were you up till last night putting the boat together we didn't stay up late we got up early so we went to bed early yeah. uh, maybe 11 o'clock 12 o'clock we were we were asleep and got up at six okay. so we got a decent sleep yeah i just got up and threw the boat together Right. So you guys were, weren't up too late. That's good. Yeah, that was good. <laughs> but it was um, an interesting first leg for me. <laughs> we, did, we didn't have a GPS anymore. So we didn't know where to go. <laughs> so, <laughs> Just follow the coast. You know, you'll get there eventually. Yeah, but we didn't see it <laughs> all the time. But it was fun. Yeah, good. So we got reports that you guys uh, flipped over out there. What was that all about? Yeah, the, the rudder system isn't working that uh, well. Every time we went fast, the rudders popped out, so... Had to go slow today. Yeah, we had to go slow. Yeah. Um, yeah we should fix them, but we didn't have the time uh, this morning to, uh, to prepare it well. So, I think we are going to do that. Uh, <laughs> right now, yeah, yeah. So, you, I mean, it, you were dealt a difficult hand today. I mean, you were given a boat that you'd never sailed before. Um, you know, who knows what condition it was in. Um, you guys haven't really sailed that much together, you know, a couple of days or whatever for practice. So, um, you know, it, it was a hard day. But but uh, you guys are out there doing it, and tomorrow tomorrow's going to be good. Yeah, we were singing songs and having fun. It was, it was a good day. Yeah. Nice. That, we finished. That's the important part. That's what it's all about, man. We didn't look too bad. I guess. <laughs> yeah. Well, right on, guys. I'll let you go take a break. Thank you so much, man. Hey, thanks. Good a lot. to have you on the beach and uh, yeah, watch this. Yeah, that was fun. Cool. All right. Hey, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you. Live coverage from Mustang Beach of the Great Texas 300. And uh, yeah, thank you very much, John Williams, my cohort. Thank you very much, dude. You don't have to come over here unless you want to, but you are more comfortable with a microphone. Close to you. <laughs> we look ridiculous. We were talking about that the other day, Hal. Anyway, thank you very much for watching our live feed. Yeah, thanks for joining us. We'll be right back at it again tomorrow morning. Watch for some highlights that uh, we're going to have put together tonight. Yes. And a couple more Facebook posts, maybe some more pictures as the fleet is now gathering. Andrew Tatton has barbecued up, I, I think, an entire cow. So we're going to go over there and have some uh, cow. Texas and, barbecue, uh, man. Texas barbecue. And the whole fleet is lined up now to get some food. So we'll uh, we'll bring you some pictures on the Facebook page from that. 
and we'll get all queued up for tomorrow morning. I love it. Join us. We should go live right around 9.30 uh, in time to maybe talk to a few people. We're going to try doing some roving cams and talk to people as they're getting set up. Clearly, there's some things that we're going to be looking at tomorrow. Rudder issues on the Yo Baby Tiger. Uh, we want to see how they address that for tomorrow. Uh, Lee Wickland said that he's got some things that he wants to look at on the boat. Heard some mystery pops today. Never a good sound when you're offshore. Uh, and then there was some talk about people trying to figure out how to deal with the weed better. Everyone said that the weed was a real problem today, much more than typical for this leg, which is, uh, you know, as you can see what we're standing in here, it's, it's here frequently, but not to this degree. So uh, all the teams are talking about how they can deal with that faster. Team Sailboat Shop said they saw their velocity go to eight knots yeah. in good breeze because they were dragging so much stuff. And by the time, just like John Tomko said, you clear the board, you put it back down, you got another weed on. So I think somehow some of these guys have got to figure out how to sail that balance in between, you know, doing 15 instead of 18 but dragging weed and not slowing down to clear and doing eight right. and dragging a forest. <laughs> At some point, you do got to get rid of it. <laughs> Absolutely. So we'll try to bring you some of that tomorrow <laughs> yes. morning before the start. Thank you very much for joining us. John, thank you very much. Another great day. Indeed. Have a good one. Let's Enjoy some, uh, some Texas music. Cheers, guys. Thanks for watching.